I listen to your show every single day. Work it. DJ Envy. Better known as the People's Choice. And salute to all my light skinned brothers out there. Jess Hilarious. Jess for the world I last. Jess don't do no lying. And Charlemagne the God. Doggy the day. <laughs> hey, everybody, come to the Breakfast Club. I call this the hot seat. Yo, 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 Breakfast Club is like being on America's front porch. Don't feel like my wrist cousins have never talked to me. <laughs> Every time I go to the Breakfast Club, I know it's going to be like a good man. I'm getting up. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 yo
according to this official, is that almost all of the drones and missiles that Iran uh, launched Saturday, including more than 100 ballistic missiles, were successfully knocked out of the sky. And we are told essentially that nothing of value was hit. Again, this is the U.S.'s current uh, assessment of the situation. Uh, importantly, we are also told that the president told the Israeli prime minister that the U.S. will not participate in any offensive operations against Iran. I mean, that's the best case scenario, right? I mean, from what I read, only one little girl was hurt and it caused minor damage to uh, an Israeli military base. Mm -hmm. And as you just heard, the vast majority of, uh, you know, the, the arsenal was intercepted by Israel and its allies. Yeah. So let's see if America can, can keep Israel from uh, escalating things even further with Iran by retaliating. Like, you know, we should be trying to stave off escalation in the Middle East by any means possible. And yeah, they said those drones, which they said send around 350, cost anywhere from $2 million to $6 million. And that's, that, you know, can you imagine? Can you imagine? It's, it's tax day. That's why our tax dollars are going, people. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, but in, in, in that case, the tax dollars went to the defense. Right. You know. Because 99% yes. of them were shot down. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yes. Mm. All right. Now, uh, Donald Trump, he's going to be the first, uh, I guess, the first president to be charged with a felony and his trial starts today. Donald Trump will become the first former president ever to stand for a criminal trial. He is not impressed with the case. I haven't seen one legal scholar that said this is a case. And in fact, even you people said, oh, gee, that's too bad. This is the first one. All of them are scams. And by all of them, he means all of the many criminal cases he faces around the country. 34 criminal counts in Manhattan revolving around the hush money payments to an adult film star, lying about it on various federal forms, and the star witness, Trump's one-time fixer and lawyer, Michael Cohen. A pool of hundreds of potential jurors will be asked a series of 42 questions like, have you ever attended a rally for Donald Trump? Or do you follow him on social media? And do you have strong feelings about how he has been treated? It's, it's, it's impossible. It you is going to be impossible jury, no to have a jury no way. that has not followed any of these cases. He was the former president of the United States of America. Before that, he was a freaking celebrity in the 80s. That's right. He was the executive mm -hmm. producer of Celebrity Apprentice. Everybody in their mama knows about this situation. What are we talking about here? Yeah, there's there's no way that nobody's going to ever hear or follow or see Come Donald on, Trump. It's not, it's not possible. And they probably voted for him or, or voted against him. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Like, uh, what are we talking about there's, here? There's, there's no possible way. It's impossible. All right. Well, that is front page news. Now, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Let us know how your weekend was, what you did over the weekend, whatever it may be. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. This is your time to get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is uh, Jason from Canada. Oh, Jason. Oh, I listen to you guys every morning. Oh, boy. Hey, Jason. Do you have an owl tattoo on you anywhere? He definitely does. Uh -huh. No. No, I don't. Okay. What's up, Jason? I just want to say shout out to Charlemagne for uh, for saying let the Drake song play. Man, that was a good start to the week. What did I say? He said let the Drake song well, play. Well, DJ oh, Eddie was going to oh, shut it off early, but uh, you guys let it play, and that was awesome. Okay. You got to Appreciate that I just wanted to call and say Yeah, we listened to you guys in uh, Canada also And uh We were on in Toronto guys, for a little while But Drake got us taken off That's not true No way uh, I don't know if that's true But that's it's a better story Than they just took us off Yeah, that's like Like Atlanta is doing Yeah Well, we'll discuss that right. Some other time <laughs> Hello, who's this? Yeah, this is Hood News Out of Roosevelt, Long Island Hood News, Long Island What up? Hey. Get it off your chest Yo, I just gotta say Rick Ross did Drake dirty. It's like the son put his, the father put his son right over his lap and said, I'm about to teach you a lesson. Okay. Right. I'm not mad at that opinion. Yeah, get him dirty. Okay, hood news. Hello, who's this? This is Derek. What up, though? Derek, what up, though? Detroit, get it off your chest. I want to get a couple things off my chest, but I'm going to be brief with it. One, why is it the conversations we have nowadays have to have the pause and the uh, Different stuff to indicate you're not saying something. To me, I think that's quite ridiculous. Like, are we that sensitive to where you can't say something without having to say the ridiculous cause, no cap, and all that? Like, we, we, we do it too much in the world. 
Yeah, sometimes it is very much annoying. But you I grow, you can, you can do what you want to do. You know what I mean? You ain't got to follow the trends. Absolutely, without a doubt. I'm going to always do me, but at the same time, it's just annoying to hear. Even when y'all say certain things or people, y'all guess or, or uh, uh, <laughs> invite say certain things and just cause, like, come on, man. You make the conversation more unrelatable when you cause. I'm like, what did he, what, what happened? What just happened? Yeah. What are we pausing for? What are we waiting on? That's why I think you should just say that was gay. <laughs> Instead of saying Paul, yeah. that was gay. <laughs> Yeah, or, or anything, you know, just be relatable, man. You know, it's, it's grown people following these young people trends need to stop. No, 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 you know, no, we no, need no, to... no, no. How, how, how old are you? I'm 42. Okay, I'm, I was born in 1978. I'm 45. Pause is our era, sir. Yes, it is. We, we started that like, pause. Pause, pause. So that was Cameron and them back in the day. Long day, time day, ago. Day, day. Absolutely. Long, long time ago. You know that. But, sir, I... I well, not, I not just that. that. When I, I say following young people... Yeah, I thank you. I appreciate you. But not just that, but also with the fact of some of the other stuff we do in space. That's just one thing. Okay, that may be our era, but it's a lot of stuff we do doing. You know, the crazy, dragging it out. That sounds crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? saying? Like what you say? When people say it's crazy and they drag it out, that's crazy. That's not yeah, crazy, it's just, it's, no, That was us, too. That's not, yeah. That's yeah not that new. was our era, too, bro. He just made it the we Yeah, <laughs> That wasn't our era, man. You ain't never heard people dragging the word Martin, crazy Martin out like that. All Martin used to do. <laughs> it's crazy. What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, okay, maybe you're right on that one. But listen, I got one more thing before I let you go. The student debt loan is, is why, why they want to prove it. What you mean why they want to prove it? He's been proving a bunch of them. Yeah, they've been getting a lot of them. A lot of people have been getting there. I think like 200, 200 people a couple days ago got, they, got uh, their student loans. Forgave. Okay, so here's the thing. They're not doing it for the, the average person. And what I mean by that is they're doing it for, like, uh, PSLF, public service workers, firemen, police, nurses, which I don't disagree with, but I'm saying the average person walking the street that got too low that has not, after 20 surveys that went nationwide, the average person... To, to go with what y'all was saying, let the people no, no, no. Uh, testimony or I get testify. What you're saying. Yeah, there, there, there's, there's stipulations to it, but I mean, all in all, he has, uh, I think it's 4.3 million student borrowers have had their debt erased. No, they said Biden is canceling $7.4 billion in student debt for 277,000 borrowers. Yeah, but that's the most recent one. Mm -hmm. He's done over 153 already, and he's done 4.3 million student borrowers. That's right. Most recent one is the 7.4, I believe. Yep. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wait. Wake up! Whether you're mad or blessed, it's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hello. Hey, what's up? Get it off your chest. No, I just wanted to say, <laughs> the guy, he wake up early in the morning trying to push Joe Biden on his man. That's over with, man. Who you talking about, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson? Yeah, he tripping. Like, he don't see what's going on out here. Ain't nobody voting for that dude, man. Well, there's going to be a lot of people who vote for him. I don't know if he's going to win, but there's going to be there's going to be a lot of people who vote for him. It's going to be it's going to be tens of millions. Man, I seen I seen all the Joe Biden supporters turn on him these last few years. It's probably going to be the worst election, man. Well, we're going to see in November. Thank you, Jonathan. Hello, who's this? Good morning, it's Eric from Charleston, South Carolina. 843 Low Country, what's happening? Get it off your chest. Talk to me, Charlemagne. Talk to me. How are you, man? I'm blessed, black, and highly favored. How you doing, my brother? Man, good, man. Uh, you know, talking about get it off your chest, man. I just think uh, this, today's one of those days we just got to just put some positivity out there. So the things I, I want to get off my chest is just some happiness, man. Some good vibes, man, for everybody to start their week out, man. I appreciate that. We're going to take that positive energy and raise raise you times a thousand and throw our own out there. Take it. Take it, man. Y'all be blessed. And thank y'all for all you do. Have a good one, brother. Thank you. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Toya from Columbia, South hey, Carolina. Toya. 803 Metro, what's happening? Get it off your chest, Toya. Hey, y'all. I'm calling because I wanted to give a shout out to the Lady Game Cause. We celebrated downtown their 38 and 0 victory. And it was just an amazing experience to be able to share that with them yesterday. So I congratulations know, to them. They, they had the parade yesterday, man. I wanted Super to go true. home, but I couldn't yeah. get home. 
What's yeah, we're we'll going down there. We have fun. Thank you. I heard. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, you can hit us up. Now we got Jess with the mess coming up. What are we talking about? The breakdown between Drake and everybody. Everybody and Drake? Yeah, Drake everybody versus everybody. And Drake. Yes, the 20 versus 1. All right. Let's we'll... not get distracted, though. What? Kendrick, you on the clock. We'll discuss. All right. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. We are the Breakfast Club. <laughs> Let's get to Jess with the mess. News is real, weather is real. Lions, Jessica Robin Moore, just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't nobody. Worldwide, Jess. Worldwide, mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shit. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. All right, so Saturday when I was out with my son, I seen that Drake had, well, one of Drake tracks leaked or whatever. And at first I thought, I didn't think, I was like, all right, he did this. But bars had changed on the one that he officially dropped. So I uh, thought it was AI at first. Really? Yeah, which says a lot about the world we in, right? Like right. We, got, we got to figure out if it's real before we even start talking about it. I know. You know, <laughs> I, I did see that too, but I just thought people was, was talking. No, these, bo- these bars were spot on for that to be AI. It was crazy. And only he would know certain information, right? Mm-hmm. So um, he had took some shots at Kendrick Lamar the weekend. Nav, which I didn't even know he was beefing with, the little, the little Indian boy. Mm-hmm. And um, Rick Ross, Future, and Metro Boomin. Yes, mm-hmm. and I was going to say, you have to help me break this down because... I listened a lot, you know. I I even stepped away from my son to see real quick, mm-hmm. like what's going on with this. But when when Kendrick had told me he was gonna get his chain, he was gonna snatch his chain or whatever. That's wasn't that because that was something that Kendrick said on first person shooter, right? Yes, and he's saying that Kendrick only has a size seven shoe. A lot of short shaming <laughs> so went on in this little, record. Yeah. A lot of, sh- a lot a lot of short, short shaming. shaming. The beginning was towards Future when he said, uh, "I could be he never gave be somebody's him his number, number one, one fan." Give him number I'll put one. Your first number one in your hand. That was yep. way too sexy. Yes. Didn't I know? That's when uh, he that he got him his first number one chart hit. Yep. Or whatever. Yep. 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 I didn't know that. Okay, so let's move on a little bit. Yeah, talking about Taylor Swift and Maroon Five. Basically saying that, you know, uh, Kendrick had to do, do those features because Top wanted them too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? That is so yes. messed up. Yes. yes. <laughs> you got to right. do this show inside the bitty. What's the bitty? The city. That's what how Blood would say it, though. Oh, Drake of Blood. No. no. But, uh, I mean, I, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. I, was, I no. ain't know that, okay. No. Poor Metro, man. Everywhere yeah. Metro gonna go, people gonna tell him to <laughs> shut his dumb ass up and make some <laughs> and drums. And make some drums. He gonna be in the fast food restaurant. Fast food drive through the, the people gonna be saying that he gonna be out with people and just walking through the mall or something. And people gonna be like, Metro, shut your dumb ass up and make some drugs. <laughs> Metro gonna end up in a fight because of that. Cause I'm, I'm sure. Metro gonna end up in a fight because of that line, yo. I'm sure. Because everywhere he go, people gonna be telling him to shut his dumb ass up and make some drums. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe he should do that. Like he, he does should it very be jumping. Well. I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, my son told me what twenty v one is. That's um. It's like some new little TikTok trend or the YouTube trend where the guy it'd be like twenty women for one no, uh, one guy something no, he's like that saying that it's 20 people versus him I know what Drake is saying but he got it from a trend that's going on with kids 20 like, versus 1 yeah like like they be doing it on YouTube and TikTok no I, I, people I, been saying 5 versus 1 forever alright what you think about that that's just more short shaming no about his wife he oh, mentioned oh yeah he, he shows him to, he told him to drop his little midget ass down and get him 50 but yes uh, that was, yeah, I, I don't know what that means but Whitney is the name of Kendrick's wife and Drake does that uh, because emotionally and mentally he knows that will rattle his opponent in some way mm. yeah okay, you mentioned somebody's wife on a record he did the same thing with Push okay yeah okay. yeah he's Drake Push mentioned his son after, after. Different. oh after mm-hmm. oh, okay remember Drake went at uh, Drama's baby mom too Yes, here's mm-hmm. the thing, man. First of all, I was highly, highly impressed by Push Up. Okay, Drake delivered a top tier response to everything that was going on, and this is coming from an OG veteran Drake, <clears throat> hate, Drake hater. So drop one of the clues bombs for Jesus. Drake. Okay, yeah, I, 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 I love the record. He delivered. I, you he know, carefully delivered that record. Drake, he, Drake he put did, his time, his effort into it, and he and he shot. And he did what he was supposed to do. Absolutely. And he went further than Kendrick has ever gone. Because Kendrick been throwing shots at Drake for years, you know, very blatant subliminals, but Drake aimed right at Kendrick and he said, okay, if this is what you want, then you got it. So, right now, Kendrick on the clock. Okay? Yeah. Kendrick is all the way on the clock. Drake gave Kendrick his takeover, and now Kendrick has to deliver his ether if he got it. And there's, there's, and one thing you can say about Drake is there's not one person that ever went at Drake that Drake didn't respond to. 
Whatever. If it was in his caliber. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. Name one that, that wasn't in his caliber. He, he, he backed away from Pusha after Pusha dropped that story. But, no, but he responded at first. He responded to anybody and then at first. he backed away after the story. But did he respond at first? But then he backed away from the story. But did he, did he, he respond? You're trying to give Drake some props here, but now you're going to make me say something I don't got no business You shouldn't be saying okay. I just said he responded. You're going to say yes if he responded. Say it's up. It's, it's up and it's up because Drake wants it to be up. Okay. Okay, and speaking of responses, Rick Ross has something to say he couldn't he wait to run downstairs too and he um <laughs> <laughs> and he made a diss track called Champagne Moments. <laughs> and he had a nose job too. I did not have no nose job. Don't no. Start now, now how did Drake respond to that? Because I found this very, very hilarious. He posted <laughs> he posted on his Instagram story uh Texas between him and his mom. Cause yes. his mom was like, Wait a minute, you went to go get a nose job without me? <laughs> and you know I went one for a long time. And he was like, I would have got a two for one deal if I went mom. It's coming from Rick Ross, the guy I did songs with. He's gone loopy off the Manjaro. He has eaten in days, <laughs> and, and it's turned him angry and racist. The performance he performs at proms for money, it's bad. We'll handle it. As Don't soon, worry about it. As soon as Drake called Ross racist, Ross should have called Drake a Karen. Okay. <laughs> you should have called him a Karen right off top. And instead of white boy, Ross, you should have called Drake Aubrey Graham Cracker. Okay. Uh -huh. are, you, are you jumping in this too? <laughs> no, I'm yeah, not. Yeah, the yeah. truth is, like you're this the thing. The he truth just is, gave Drake all that props and now he uh, fired back. I'm just ghost right I'm, back. I'm, I, 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 I ghost right back. I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm just sitting back watching as a hip hop fan. But the truth is, I don't care about any of those other rappers. I don't care about Ross replying to Drake. We are here for the main event. Drake, I don't need you taking no more fights before we get to what we came to see, which is Kendrick, Kendrick, Kendrick. And Kendrick, you on the clock. Yeah. It's all on Kendrick now. Kendrick has been calling for this. He's been asking for this for several years, and he got what he wanted. So now it's time to show and prove because Drake said it. Drake up right now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Drake yeah. up right now. Absolutely. Because right? Drake took it farther than Kendrick ever has. And he set it up for a part two. At the at the end, he did say, don't make me like really, really suck. He told Kendrick, drop that record that you've been sitting on for four years. That is so mm -hmm. unfair. And Kendrick, I hope you have not been sitting on a record for four years. Not, after what I heard with a uh, push up, mm -hmm. you need to take a breath. You take your time and reply correctly. Cause like I said, Drake dropped his takeover, mm -hmm. so now you got to give us your ether. If you if you got the ether, that's what he do anyway. Though he takes his time. He should four years. He, he, no, <laughs> we don't know. He, he better come back that. faster than that. Uh, he yeah. got a couple weeks. He, he better come back faster than that. I, I, I actually think he, I, I give him. I, I actually give him some days. Drake came back in what a week. About yeah, that's weeks. why I said that was pretty fast. Not about two weeks. No, about a week. Six. It's been two weeks. It's eight days. It's been two weeks since that future record drop. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think that's because the yeah that's because everybody else he heard everybody else like that's where the twenty v one came from. At first it was just Drake. I mean, uh, Kendrick. And then mm -hmm. he hear everybody keep talking about him. It's like, all right, now I really got to go. I don't care about none of them other people. Do this. Drake versus Kendrick is the main event. Kendrick, you've been asking for this for years. You finally got what you asked for. Drake gave it right to you. This Served is, it up. Put it right at your doorstep. What's up? This is Drake versus everybody. Next What's tour, that's to be the tour. Right? Drake versus everybody starts selling t-shirts. Cool. Hats, sweatshirts, and all. Well, somebody in Detroit will make a lot of money because I know that they own that. Yeah, they patent that. that yeah, so maybe not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Shout out to Detroit. What up, though? And that is just with the mess. Yes, it is. All right. Now, when we come back, we got front page news. We'll tell you about Chicago. Chicago is a, a very, a very nasty over the weekend. And we'll discuss it when we come back, man. Jeez. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Just want to start off saying salute to the Knicks. They secured the number two seed in the playoffs. I would have loved to face uh, the Pacers all over uh, the 76ers of Miami Heat, though. But it is, it's also amazing, to too, Knicks. to watch all of the people who jumped ship to the Nets a few years ago. You know, because Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and James Harden and all of them was over there. That's so been over was, a long time. They was ago. all rooting for Brooklyn. But now they just sneaking back over to the Knicks. That's been over a long time. Rob ago. Markman, I'm talking to you. Damn it, man. Envy, I think I'm talking to you, Definitely too. not talking to me. Always been a Knicks fan. Yeah, right. I go to the Nets games. I support the Nets. I'm a New Yorker, With but Nets I'm a Knicks gear fan. On. So what? Exactly. You cannot be. You can't say you're a Knicks fan if you've ever worn Nets gear. My That's nephew, disgusting. My little nephew plays for them. That's why. Well, where is, I wouldn't even wear his jersey. My nephew not plays a Knicks for, fan. for the Nets. I wouldn't That's even wear why. a pin. All right. Well, mm. let's talk about uh, this mass shooting in Chicago leaves one child dead. Balloons now sit near the front yard of a home where Ariana Molina should still be playing in tonight. Instead, her father is mourning the loss of his nine-year-old daughter, who died in a shooting Saturday night that injured 10 other relatives near 52nd and Damon. They had some big assault rifles, I guess, because it was too many shots. They shot, they shot my daughter in the head, my <laughs> wife in the back, me in my leg, my two nephews, and a couple more 
family members. Jose Molina says his family was hosting a party to celebrate his sister's confirmation. Just as they were getting ready to cut the cake, Chicago police say two shooters fired off 18 rounds at the group. Police say the shooting appears to be gang related, but Molina strongly refuted that today. At first, I thought it was fireworks, man, but when I saw my daughter laying down on the floor with a bullet in the head, I realized it wasn't the fireworks. I tried helping her, but it was too late. It's hard to tell people that crime is dropping all over America when you hear stories like that every day. How are you going to ever convince that family or people in that neighborhood that America is safer, as y'all have been saying, right? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> right. Hell? Here's some other news. Now, uh, a man was arrested after punching a nine-year-old in the face. Now, this guy was arrested a week before for punching a woman in and the face. And that was in New York, right? In New York, The yeah. safest city in America? Yeah, right. Safest uh, big city in America? Now to a developing story. Police have arrested a man accused of randomly assaulting a nine-year-old girl. Investigators say without warning, 30-year-old Giancarlo Zarzuela ran up and punched the child around noon today inside busy Grand Central Terminal. The nine-year-old girl was taken to the hospital for treatment and we're told she will be okay. Yeah, like I said, he was arrested a week <sighs> earlier for punching a woman in the face. He was, uh, they gave him $2,500 bond, and then the judge came back and said, no, we're going to take the bond off, and then he was released, and then a couple days later, punched a nine-year-old in the face in the same place. And this well, is not the same guy who was punching the women, is it? No. Saboki? Mm -mm. Saboki, no. Once again, how are you going to tell people that uh, America is safe? Right, mm -hmm. and America is safer when things like this are happening all the time. When we hear these stories every single day, and a lot of times it's about the same people. You said this guy just did this what a yes, week ago? It, said it did it to an elderly woman earlier on, this man. month. Yeah, a couple on, of weeks ago, came out and did the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. No bail, no so bond. He just came in, took a picture, and went right back out on the streets. Mm -hmm. So a kid. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that is front page news. Now, you want to talk about cosmetic surgery? Because it hurt your heart a little bit this weekend when you um, heard Rick Ross shaming Drake for the alleged cosmetic surgery that he had. Because, you know, you and Drake both... Well, I don't know if Drake had a nose job, but you definitely had a nose job. I did not have a nose job, so yes, you did. No, Is did that not. why you were saying you felt bad for Drake? You were no, sorry I, because he tried to come for his nose? Yes. Well, I said I feel bad because it was tw it's 20 people jumping him at I once, know, but it had nothing to do with it. I didn't have oh, nose okay. surgery, what first of all. What is the TikTok trend? You said, 20 cos you said 20 cosmetologists coming at one person? To do no, I didn't. What? I said what? 20v1 when you shut it down. Casanet does it all the time. 20 women versus one guy. And a guy got to pick a woman. Well, that's why guys are getting cosmetic surgery. Because if it's that many women out here that they got to impress, they got to get cosmetic surgery to do it. Envy, when you got your nose job last year. I did not get year, a nose job last year. What'd you year? do then? I got had the polyps removed out of my nose because I was snoring heavily. So, so the doctors put you under. And, and removed the polyps from my nose. Okay. Inside the nose. My nose How wasn't cut. <laughs> it wasn't shaved. And it wasn't trimmed. For the record, <laughs> if he did get a nose job, he got to go back. Because <laughs> that is not. You look not, pregnant. I'm not saying. Tell me a drink. <laughs> Tell me a drink. Me? <laughs> yes, you. Wait. Because I can tell you didn't get a nose job. That's not. Oh, it would be you. like no. I that's a compliment no. or not? Like it is. It, it is. is. Okay, I'll take it. No, because when right. you get a nose job, you're getting it to be slimmer and more narrow, and that's not what it's giving. <laughs> that's how I know you black. <laughs> that's how. I, yes, your nose. So oh, well, I don't great. understand the shame around men. Um, you know, doing little things to make themselves look better and feel better. Like, it's a lot of shaming of the hairlines going on now. People going out there to Turkey and they're going to Boston and they're going mm -hmm. to Miami to get their hairline done and people shaming them for it. Why? They're talking about Akon and, and his... Akon looks ridiculous. He needs to I was right now. I was don't, great don't saying that when it looked crazy, okay. Yes. Like, no. Nori, they said Nori got a, a hairline. Nori always had a hairline, though. Nori just always had a low Caesar. He just, well, he died <laughs> and let it grow. He using that Rewind it's 10. Too dark. He using yeah. Fat Joe's Rewind 10. That's mm -hmm. what that is. Mm -hmm. You got to go to a dark brown, Nori. You, you black. You got to go dark brown on the hair. Look, make it a little yeah. more natural. Acons look like a hat. It does. Jesus yeah. Christ. It kind of look like cat. Mitchell and Nessa started made his. Yeah. <laughs> like it should yeah. be removed. So, so <laughs> what is the question? 800-585-1051. Should men be shamed for getting little nip tucks and little plastic surgeries here and there? What's the, I, don't, I don't see the that, Let's just say cause... <laughs> Not little nip tucks. <laughs> like don't say don't specify. Just say shit guys be ashamed because to get cosmetic surgery. Women get weaves. Right. Women get surgery. Right. We even women get nose jobs. Yeah, we did. Uh women get uh, women, women get edge restoration. That's all the hairline is, edge, edge restoration. restoration. Yeah. yeah, I well, you can get that. Edge restoration? Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nobody been so man, cause baby. I'm over here struggling. I got pregnant, I got pregnant so I can grow some hair. Whatever happened to that? They be like, oh, your hair, your nails grow. Okay, what you doing, little baby? Only to lose the hair once you had a baby. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Well, let's discuss 800-585-1051 because like you said, women, they don't do the same for women. Women get nails. Women get eyelashes. Women get boob jobs. Women get BBLs. Change their eye color. Change their eye color. Uh, yeah. Everything. Yeah. Charlamagne mm-hmm. got his eyebrows done. We'll talk about it when we come back. 585 That's a damn lie. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. What, what is it? Yeah. Thank you. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're talking about male surgeries. Now, this conversation comes from Charlamagne. No, it doesn't. It comes yes, from uh, it Rick Ross going at Drake, saying that Drake had a nose job and saying Drake had... Some type of ab surgery, BBL right? Or yeah, he was like, but but his abs went away. That's why he be wearing all that dumb stuff at his concerts. Yeah, so he said that Drake got sculpted to have the six pack and he got an old job. <laughs> now, last year over the holidays, Envy had an old job. That's a lie. Yes, you did. When you Cap. came back talking funny. No, it's not. I had my polyps removed from my nose because I was snoring so much at night. Whatever you want to say. There's no nose job. Nothing that got thin, so nothing got crazy. toned, nothing uh, got uh, cut, okay. scalped, well, I, nothing. I don't believe yeah. that. But whatever. I just don't understand why do men get shamed when they go get a little, 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 you know, lipo lunch at lipo, a lipo like, lunch or whatever the heck they call it. I feel like guys talk down on women so much mm. for doing it. Mm-hmm. Like not at all guys, but we see more negativity toward women when they do it. Mm-hmm. And oh, you need to love yourself. Oh, your body look crazy. You know, women do it to women too, but men do it too. Mm-hmm. And so that's why now a lot of men are starting to do it. And I think women just is like, oh, y'all talked about us, but you over here buying abs. You over here, <laughs> you just Beijing on my pillow. Oh, you over here, it's, you know, so they become a natural. Beijing doesn't come off the pillow. Either that's just a man that sticks to the hair. Just want to let you know. I'm not just, talking about you. I'm not saying that you. I'm, I'm just <laughs> telling you that just, you know that just just for men and and Beijing does not bleed on the pillow. I don't well, think, it'd be the spray. I don't think there's anything <laughs> wrong with it. You know, what I mean, if you want to go get you a new hairline because you want your hairline back, mm. do it. You know, um, even if you want to do the body surgery, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't you know do it. But I don't have a problem if you want to go get it done. Yeah. You know, people go get their teeth done. Like why not? Like yeah. why wouldn't you? If you can, if you can have a little enhancement here, something to make yourself right. feel better here, like why not? What's right. the problem? Yeah, see, but the problem with that is, is when you do it, most people don't stop, and then they yeah. start looking crazy. You start looking like cat women and, and cat dudes because yeah. it's like you, you, you never. It's like I get a little surgery, then I eat a little more, then I get another little surgery. I now I, I got to mm. get eyebrows. I got to fix my eyebrows. Well, what you, go, you gonna keep going because you got a little just for men? What you about to do now? You got a nose job and some just for men. What I else bet you I got a nothing. nose job, sir. What else you plan on doing? You gonna make your earlobes a little thinner? No. <laughs> no. Uh, your earlobes do hang a little bit. My earlobes are, th- are fine. Them ears are wearing all them big ass diamond earrings. You right. got your little droopy. Hey, You're right. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine with my earlobes. You can sir. get a surgery on anything. Did y'all know you can get new kneecaps? Really? I yes. might need those. I some might... people need that. <laughs> I ain't gonna front. My some people's kneecaps be looking like freeway. Salute to my guy freeway. Oh my but if you look at certain people's kneecaps, it look like. A person from Philly with the beard. <laughs> what are you talking it's all, about? It's all dark Yo, around the edges, like at, at the bottom. Shut I'm up. Serious. I did not even know that it is. Oh, yeah, I'm getting kneecap surgery. Oh, okay. Well, One of my friends. Let's go to the phone line. Hello, who's this? Hey, what's up? Good morning. This is Buka. It's Carla from Philly. Buka from hey, Philly. Hey, man. What's up? MV, Charlemagne, and Justice the Mask. Hey, hey what's man. up? What's your thoughts, Buka? Uh, my thoughts is I don't see nothing wrong with men getting any like cosmetic surgery because I feel like you know people do that type of stuff but they are not confident within themselves so they see something within themselves that they want to change and they want to fix so I don't see nothing like that's wrong with that now, now I do see like it depends on what they're getting I can say like I don't think men should be getting like a BBL or lipo yes, yeah but taking the fat out and putting it and you're behind, I don't think that would be, like, acceptable. Now, what if you're a bottom? Think, what if you're a bottom and you want to be a power bottom and you want to have a little bit more cushion for the pushing back Yeah, you want to be able to suit it out. I mean, the, that's why I said it depends. So, now, if you're a gay black man, I, I definitely see that. But I see far as you're, like, a straight black man, you shouldn't be getting no injections or no... No, but transfer. But Buka, straight men are doing everything. They're wearing bags and pocketbooks now. They're painting their nails. So it's it's no it's no longer straight or gay. It's just men. Are, it seemed like it. No, he's definitely so straight and gay. Well, in 2024, I see that. But you know, back then, me growing up, I'm born in the 90s, so I didn't wasn't. Oh, that wasn't acceptable as it is today. Right. Now, so today, today's world, yes, I do agree with that. Now, Buka, are you gay? Yes, I definitely am. A thousand percent. I can hear it in your voice. So. 
the fact that you telling these men uh-huh. that not to get the uh, the BBL and you don't want fatter asses out here says a lot. Yeah, because I don't want fat asses. I want fat. Oh, I can't say that. Oh, ah, my goodness. Bible girl. Right. Bible girl. Right. Dang. He, he don't want fat ass. He want fat. Oh, respect. Well, you respect that. Oh, my that, God, right? Buka. 800 <laughs> Should we be shaming these guys out here getting these surgeries? That's the question. Let's discuss. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. If y'all talking about it, you know we talking about it. It's Topic Time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're talking about men getting these cosmetic surgeries and people shaming them. So 800-585-1051. So Jess, if your man came home and said he wanted to get some type of surgery, would you mind? Yes, I would mind. Because I love him the way that he is. He's <laughs> fine as hell from top to bottom. So he good. Uh-uh. What if you can get fine at all? No, 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 that's, no, you don't have to be finer. You get finer with age. <laughs> that's what you do. All you got to do is grow up. What if he got jacked up teeth? He don't. They're nice. <laughs> but what if he did? What if he did? You know what I'm saying? Then, I mean, uh. If not, teeth is important. No, 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 you're you're right. Because, all right, now, nothing's wrong with Chris, but the first Chris I was dating, oh, my God, <laughs> teeth was so crowded. It was like a little concert down there. <laughs> and I was trying to ask him, can you get Invisalign? And he was like, all right, I mean, nobody ever had a problem with it before. Why? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because right. if you're talking to you, and I make people laugh all the time, and I'm laughing at you, <laughs> and I said it's like, oh, my God, I feel attacked. <laughs> so, yeah, attacked. I was, so I do, teeth are big. See? Yes, see, that's a big thing. Oh, yeah. and, 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 and and hairline. Like a hairline is another thing. A lot of brothers ain't ready to let it go yet. Yeah. And if there's surgery out there that can restore it, <laughs> not even just restore it, I guess like jump start it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Because it just stopped. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, don't mean the, that don't mean you throw the whole car away. Yeah. No, you know, I'm get a little jump start. Too. I was I was watching uh, the Lakers play uh, over the weekend and LeBron ball spot in, his, in the back of his it's head. It's gone, it's, ain't it? Oh, man. I feel so bad for him. It's gone. Oh, my God, it's back? No, no, it's like the ball spot is, is there now. Like, oh, my like God. Because yeah. I remember sometimes he would cover it, sometimes he wouldn't. Yeah, he well, you're probably scared oh. to get it done now because y'all doing all this shaming. Maybe. You think LeBron care? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hello, who's this? Yo, it's Alex. What's good with you, bro? What's up, bro? Talk to us. What's your thoughts? What's going on? Uh, good morning, by the way. Charla, Jess. Uh, good God morning. Dang, Envy. I ain't going to lie, man. It's going to be, people going to be mad. It's the first time I ever called y'all. I got to. I can't believe it. <laughs> I think men should be allowed to do whatever they want to, man. Like, oh, uh, it's women out here getting breast reduction, you know, breast enlargement, uh, just all kind of surgery. So, if a man wanna wanna get something done, get a little nip tuck, get a little nippy tuck. Ain't nothing wrong with that. What would you get done if yeah, you could, brother? If you had the chance. If I had the chance, if I had the chance, <laughs> Charlie, you messy boy. You like what you would get done? Uh, <laughs> if I had the chance, I probably uh, I probably would get, believe it or not, shorter. Shorter. Are you so what what's your Yeah. Hand? Pip squeak pipe down. I, Why would you want to get shorter? I, I'm a I'm six two right now, but I've been tall as shit my whole life. Like I know that's not tall for a thirty year old these days, but Six two. Why, yeah. would, why would you, you want to be get shorter? shorter? Like, because you want to be the short super king. Duper tall. You just yeah. you want to live longer. I'm that's a why. fighter. I'm a I'm a fighter, y'all. I don't know if I ever heard of power slap, but I'm I'm a I'm a slap fighter. Mm. So oh. I think I think I think the shorter guys have an advantage. That oh, makes sense. So you want to be short so you can slap me? Every short niggas. guy want to be tall. He the only tall guy that want to be short. That is not right. true. I've never, heard a tall, I've never heard a tall guy be like, I want to be a little shorter. And yes. every short guy don't want to be tall. And you want to be a little taller. No, I don't. Not How long did it take you to be able to ride the rise at Great Adventure? I like what God gave me because some of y'all tall for no reason. You dumbass want to be in the NBA ass Negroes. <laughs> right. But then you tall, know tall is how slapping is. That's what? right. <laughs> now you're doing security. Right. And ain't nobody scared of you because you tall. <laughs> you know hey, what I'm saying? yo. That's hilarious. Hello, who's this? It's Mitchell. Can you hear me? Hey, Mitchell, we can hey, hear you. What's your thoughts, Mitchell? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm with my 13 year old, my 12 year old man in the car. Every morning we listen to y'all. We try to get through it. That was good. Good morning to y'all. Good oh, morning. All right, uh, all right, so check me out. I grew up in the in the 90s, right? I was born in 87. And I feel like when I was younger, my favorite rapper said, fat, black, ugly as ever. However, like the confidence in just being who you are and showing up how you are mm-hmm. and, you know, kind of playing the game as. <laughs> with the hand to his belt, you know? If you want to get a BBL or something, if you want abs, I mean, you could do that, or you could 
do it the old school way where you just work for the things that you want and they're more rewarding than if you just I don't know Pay for it. Jump on the table. Pay for it. Yeah. Oh my God, Jeff. I'm from Gofield and Garrison. I love you so much. And I found out you got one. I love you too. Can I shout out my Instagram? I'm a black anime artist. Sorry. All right. Mose Art 812 on Instagram and TikTok. Black anime. All right. And shout out to your kids in the car, man. Come on. Yeah, shout out to them babies. Shout out to Farrah. Shout out to Lincoln. Appreciate y'all. All right. Have a good day at school, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, what's the moral of the story? Moral I story appreciate is- that his la- that that opinion though. Uh-huh. Like he said, how he grew up in the nineties, and his favorite rapper was fat, black, ugly. Is that he's talking about Biggie? Biggie right? yep, yep. Exactly. So if you just if you basically stay true to yourself, and then you can work for the same things that you're going to go buy. Mm-hmm, like, yeah. and it, I feel like it's easier for a man. We can't just grow breasts. Like, oh my gosh. Like, I'm telling you, I was like looking like Trey Song, so I was like 22. I had to, I'm talking about in the <laughs> chest area. I had to get boobs. Like, I'm telling you, I, I always wanted it. It's not even for a guy. I always wanted something to put in the bra. I was in training. Training Make your clothes bras, fit better. Was, you can wear different stuff. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. right. Um, but for men, yo, the gym. I'm talking about now. When it comes to the headlines, okay, sometimes you gotta let it go. But mm-hmm. I just feel like men have it so much easier to like get toned bodies and get the body that they want. Like I feel it's like it's not that simple. You gotta work it takes at work. it. Though. It takes work. I know inconsistency. Yes, it takes work. but it's like you gotta eat right. And by the way, men, y'all keep bringing up Biggie. We don't know what Biggie would have been on if Biggie would have still been alive now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like a yeah. lot of the stuff that Biggie probably wanted to do back then weren't available now. Biggie might have been vegan. Do <laughs> you know what wow. I'm saying? Oh. Like, there's a whole lot that might have changed oh, Biggie about Biggie. Biggie might have got a surgery. We, who knew Jay-Z was going to have a whole head of hair in 2024? But he, got, he grew that. He didn't go pay for that. We don't know that. Oh, my God. Shut up, man. Don't, don't put that out there. No, don't put that out there. He grew that hair, man. What's wrong with you, man? We don't know that. He grew that hair. We don't know that for sure. Oh, my Lord. All right. We got Just With The Mess coming up. What we talking about? Yes, we do. Brittany Griner and her wife want to have a baby. They want to be me and Chris so bad. <laughs> they do. They really do. All right. Okay. She's going to do everything I do, like, girl. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to that next. Is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Happy Monday. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club on this Monday. How y'all feeling out there? <sighs> Blessed, black, and highly favored, man. Start of another work week. Uh, I want to thank everybody who went out this weekend and purchased My Black Country by Alice Randall. Mm-hmm. Um, I was looking on Amazon this weekend, and it was like, Number one, two, three, number one, two, and four, or something like that. Because mm-hmm. you know it's different versions, like the audio book, the hardcover, yep, yep, yep. and she got an album different that came out with chef. it. So thank you to everybody. Salute to her. Congratulations, who's My to Black her. Country by Alice Randall. Hope y'all continue to do that in Atlanta. I want to tell you, man, uh, Saturday, April 27th, we will be in Atlanta for the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival happening at uh, Pullman Yards. Atlanta, what's the, our station? Atlanta. 105.3 uh, to be. Well, we're going to talk about that during Donkey today. Because, you know, crazy. ain't none of them been returning our phone calls all weekend after that little story that broke on Friday. But we'll talk about that. But uh, Wallow and Gilly going to be on that podcast stage. Mm-hmm. Chester Larry going to be on that podcast stage. Mm-hmm. Going Carefully Reckless. We got the Baller Alert Show yep. going to be on that podcast stage. Paul Mines podcast. Dre and Lex, they're going to be on that stage. Uh, Mandy and Wheezy, Horrible Decisions. Debbie Brown with Deeply Well. Will Lucas with Black Tech Green Money. So we got everything covered from comedy to mental health to financial literacy. All of that. So. Go get your tickets at eventbrite.com uh, or blackeffect.com slash podcast festival. And we'll see you Saturday, April 27th in ATL, shorty. That's right. And when we come back, we got Jess with the Mess. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Oh, yeah, but stop playing with Jess and let's get right into Jess with yeah, the Mess. Yeah, uh, Jesus, real brother. Jessica Robin Moore. Jess, don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. It's your spare nobody. 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 She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. Okay, so over the weekend, Tyler, the creator, um, had went to Coachella and responded to Gerald Carmichael. You know, Gerald Carmichael on his new reality show, he had said, um, he confessed that he had romantic feelings for Tyler, but was turned down and called a stupid bitch in response. Mm. The reason I wanted to talk to you on camera is that I kind of felt like a distance between us. I have an idea of what it is, but what I think what do you is think made that it is? awkward. It's because I told you I had feelings for you and you, we, we didn't talk about it ever. That was like weird. I feel like you left me hanging out there a little bit like. Like when you said that, I think I replied with like something super mad, normal, regular, like. You laughed and called me a stupid bitch. <laughs> I did. <laughs> 
<laughs> yo, he's such a bow, yo. Anyway, yeah, so over the weekend at Coachella, Tyler actually spoke on it a little further. I'm guessing y'all got TikTok it. Probably see my homie try to f me on camera. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. I told him you no, know, and he said, but what about if we filmed it? That was strange. Like, you it know, was. if you know you already got rejected, why put it on camera? But I mean, I guess everything is content nowadays. It is. I guess, but come on. It's it's weird. It's awkward. It's crazy and stupid. The episode is very awkward. Yeah, yeah. The whole series is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, <laughs> Tyler also had some other things to say. He also said he used to hate ASAP Rocky. Yo, he is so dumb. He said, you know what's crazy? I used to hate him too. Okay, we thought we had beef, but it was the people around us. Then me and Rakim, which is ASAP Rocky's real name, mm -hmm. we were like, we was in love and now we're friends. I think it's healthy to hate people. Yeah. Because if that's your true feeling and that's your true emotion towards a person, no need to front about it. But yeah, they, but why but you they hate didn't them, though? hate each other. Yeah, they didn't uh -huh. hate each other. They didn't have beef. Yeah. It's uh, the people who's around them. And then, all type of reasons you don't like things in people. <laughs> yeah, but it, they cool now. They say, but but he said that they was in love huh? and now they're friends all the time. Yeah, that's what he said. You don't be listening. It's, I know your little headphone hanging off, but it's saying, we was in love and now we friends. Whole time they was in love. And that's why they thought they hated each other. Oh, that's they, what Tyler okay. said about him saying. and Aesop. Okay. Yeah. Tyler be playing though. Yeah, all the time. Tyler be playing, the biggest though. troll ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's so funny. All right, move all right, on. Yeah, it's all fun and games to one of your friends try to put <laughs> <behind> Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> all... <laughs> it's all fun and games to one of your friends actually try to put a penis in you. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep, on camera. <laughs> anyway, listen. Brittany Griner and her wife, Sherelle, are expecting um, their first baby or whatever. Before so, you? That's what I said. Look, no. I was like, she want to be like me and Chris so bad. The whole time, the picture that they posted, they holding, uh, they holding each other's hands and they have the ultrasound in the middle. And the caption said, I can't believe we're less than three months away from meeting our favorite human being. So they got pregnant before me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh my God. And I'm sitting here like, oh, you want to be like me? Whole time it's like me and Chris copying off of them. How many months away are you? Four. I'm four. four. Okay. She got one month on me. Mm. Right. Did they talk about who's who's the father or who? How they? What? Basically, they... how did that happen? <laughs> yeah. That's what you wanted. Well, no, because no, well, it's okay to no, say that in me. No, I'm how asking did it the happen? I'm, I, no, well, I'm obviously asking. Brittany is not having the baby. Her right, her wife Sherelle is pregnant. Correct. But they they did that by in vitro fertilization. Yeah. Okay. So you know, um, just like Brittany did back in 2022. Um, well, that's not when they had to be, but she was formerly married to uh, Gloria Johnson, and they had a child support dispute back in 2022. The issue was the cost of caring for the couple's twins, infants, Ava Simone and Soleil Diem. Those are the prettiest names ever. But um, her ex-wife became pregnant with the girls by in vitro fertilization as well during her brief marriage with Griner. Yeah, they was in the comments. They was like, oh my gosh. Like, people are so negative. Like... Why she she's already a deadbeat? I'm like, uh uh, don't say that. Ooh, she already Brittany talking about she already a deadbeat for over to her other kids, and now she about to have another one. Boy, you just confused <laughs> the hell out of me. I can't that's you what they said. That, how? First you confused me when you said she was a deadbeat. Then you said she was a deadbeat father. Now I'm sitting that's here like, what huh? they, that's what the comment said. That's yeah, I'm not saying it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so All she right. would be a deadbeat mother, but they were saying, oh my gosh, she got already you, somebody you, deadbeat father, and now she about to have another baby. But yeah, our kids gonna look alike though. Can you be a deadbeat day? <laughs> Y'all confusing me. I don't know. I don't I'm think Brittany identifies on day. I'm, I'm confused. I don't know. I'm confused. just trying to be progressive. <laughs> I'm confused. Anyway, listen. I ain't going to ask no more questions. Moving on. Congratulations, <laughs> Brett Brett and Sherelle. All right, look. Keisha changes TikTok lyrics. Well, Kesha. I always call her Keisha. My bad. Uh, changes TikTok lyrics to FP Diddy during her appearance at Coachella. Together for Kesha. You know, let's scream it for five seconds. The but the original song, she said, wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. And he'd be like, yeah, what's up, girl? Yeah, but she changed it. But I'm tripping that that song is called TikTok and it came out in 2010. I know, right? But I mean, you know, it was... I there know. was a phrase called TikTok before. There was an app called TikTok. So. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, she... <laughs> like, can't just sit down. But yeah, so she changed it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was, that was the clown news. I just wanted to add that at the end. Okay. Well, she is a girl. survivor. Of abuse. So she is? Yeah, so she would... She but not of Diddy. Not from Diddy, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, oh my God. Yeah, so so why sure. is she even saying the name? Oh, okay. I'm sure any story about uh, an alleged abuser triggers her. And if she got a song Absolutely. that's a hit song, it would make sense for her to change the lyric. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's nice. All right. Well, that she has a song. Sorry. 
And that is just with the mess. Yeah, mm-hmm. just with the mess. All right, Charlamagne, who are you giving that donkey to? You know, for after the hour, um, you know, we were talking about Atlanta a little while ago. Yeah. And, you know, we, I, I don't know if we, I was about to say are on the radio in Atlanta, 105.3 to beat. We are right now. I don't know if we are. I think we are. There was a, a story that came out on Ball Alert Friday yeah. that said the Breakfast Club was being <clears throat> dropped from a 105.3 to beat in Atlanta. Nobody's told us. I haven't heard anything. We, we've been asking a couple of questions all weekend. Nobody replied to me. Anybody replied to you, Envy? No, nobody. Anybody said replied to, to you, Jess? I don't ask no questions. I just be like, it is what it is. Well, we'll discuss for after the hour because okay. I got some executives that need to get some donkey of the days out here. And these, uh, oh my gosh! Don't lose no. your job. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. But so my point, <laughs> <laughs> my point is, my point is simply this: it's just like you know, respect goes both ways. But we'll talk about it for after the hour. So yeah. you give him donkey. Okay, so we won't be on the station after this. All right, we will the, not. That's not. what I'm saying. He always well, look, we already up. dropped. He it probably, was, you probably the reason. You are the reason. I'm sure. And fix your headphones. Yeah, fix them dumbass see. headphones. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Come on, you're checking out the Breakfast Club. Fake-ass Some donkey of the days just saw themselves. I've been watching Charlotte, man. I was ready for it. I never heard of a donkey of the day. What is it? I'm a donkey. Say it again, Charlotte, man. I'm a donkey. Yes. You are a donkey. Y'all show you how to act a donkey. Everything that Charlotte is saying is true. Is it? Is it Terrence Howard? A donkey of the day for Monday, April 15th goes to the suits. The executives at 105.3 to beat in Atlanta. Drop on the clues bombs for everybody listening up in Atlanta. Shout out to Atlanta. I don't Atlanta. know if they are this morning, but uh, I'm not going to name individual names because I don't know who to aim at yet. And I hate to bring internal uh, work things to the public because I know y'all don't care. But the same way every now and then y'all vent about your place of employment. Every now and then I have to vent about mine too. Uh, we, the Breakfast Club, are blessed to be syndicated in over 100 markets. We truly thank God for it all. Drop on the clues bombs for the 8 million monthly listeners that make that possible uh thank you one of those markets is in atlanta georgia 105.3 to beat uh we do very well in that market we also have the second annual black effect podcast festival happening uh in atlanta april 27th thank you go get your tickets right now at eventbrite.com or blackeffect.com slash podcast festival uh but on friday i saw this pop up uh on baller alert did y'all see this i did i saw I it you saw it <laughs> yep see. Me it was sent to me phone. let me see Damn, I can't even find it now. By my know. friends in Atlanta. Oh, last phone today. he got. He can't even pull it up. What they say? Jesus. Oh, here it goes. They say, wow, y'all not going to be broadcasting in Atlanta no more? You see that? Mm-hmm. They get, see. They're kicking y'all out, Josh, because you can't read. I'm like, what? So it's your that would not be the reason because I can't read. What? It's, it's said on Baller Alert, uh, sources confirm the Breakfast Club, and they use this very pixelated picture of us. It Absolutely. says, sources confirm the Breakfast Club to be dropped from 105.3 FM's lineup in Atlanta. Now, the reason I'm bringing this to radio is because I've been asking about this uh, a little bit this weekend, and I ain't getting no answers. You getting the answers, Debbie? I did not. Just Larry, you getting the answers? I didn't even ask. I, I was too scared. I thought it was because I couldn't read. <laughs> I've, been, I've been trying to figure out what's this. up with this all weekend, okay? And nobody is responding. Louis V, the program director, that's our guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, we from South Carolina, 803 Metro. He not replying to me. What the hell is happening? Anytime y'all need something from us, we deliver. That's right. Mm-hmm. When y'all got questions, we got answers. So how come now that I got some questions, uh, we got some questions, nobody is replying. All right? I love being in Atlanta. Only problem I've ever had with Atlanta is the BS signal we on, okay? It's a, it's a good signal, but, you know, not as strong as it should be, all right? We've been pushing for a stronger signal since we found out the signal was weak. Other than that, I have no problem uh, with the ATL, but I do have a problem with corporate at 105.3 uh, to beat, not informing us that we are being dropped from the lineup in Atlanta, okay? Who are these sources? Mm-hmm. And how do these sources know more than we do? Okay, very unprofessional uh, for us to have to find this out via baller alert. And we have been nothing but professional with you all. And it's a shame that I have to get on this radio and give y'all donkey today in order to get your attention. Now, I bet today I will get a call back. Absolutely. Uh, I bet one of us will get a call back in this room today. Sure. I'll, I'll probably get a text. Right okay. now, probably. All right, yeah, pr- probably within the next five minutes. That's right. <laughs> Why is Charlene doing that? That's unprofessional. Yeah, I'm matching energies. I'm matching unprofessional energies this morning. You don't like how I'm handling this. I don't like how y'all handling us. So I would like to tell Atlanta and the people of Atlanta, thank you. And this is just to the listeners and the listeners only. Thank you. Drop on the clues bombs for the listeners in Atlanta. ATL. You made us a success on 105.3 to beat. And uh, and if this is the end, gratitude is our attitude. I don't even know if we on in Atlanta right now. Yeah. If you can hear us in Atlanta this morning on 105.3 to beat, reach out and touch us right now. 1-800-585-1051 is the number. I want to know if y'all can hear us because 
It'll probably be the last time. All right. <laughs> and if we weren't getting dropped uh, from there, and that was just a bad rumor, we probably getting dropped now. But either way, thank you, <laughs> Atlanta. Okay, thank you. The people of Atlanta have been better to us than the executives at 105.3 The Beat have been. And we will see you in Atlanta at the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival, April 27th. And 105.3 The Beat will clearly not be there. Mm. Please give all the suits at 105.3 The Beat in Atlanta the biggest hee haw. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's a big market. It is. Yeah. Like, so mm-hmm. that's like offensive. It is, right? So mm-hmm. messed up, yeah. How offensive should I get this morning? Oh my gosh. Not I want I just got here. Please. Well, should we let Kathy Griffin get I don't want to go back to the strip club. <laughs> Please don't. We, we we've sure. evolved, but every once in a while. Should we let Kathy Griffin give the suits at 105.3 to beat in Atlanta? Let it fly. Season? Let it fly. Mm. Please uh, give this giant jar of mail the biggest hee haw. I mean, you, you might as well keep going. You think Chris Rock got something to say? I know Chris Rock got something <laughs> oh, to say. No. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That might have been too far. If we weren't dropped before. <laughs> that might have been too far. We might get dropped what now. Old, what about old girl? My, my girl at the, at the restaurant got something to say. Oh, 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 oh. They gonna go Bobby Woman. Well, we be black like, though. Y'all think y'all black ass off crackers. now? Black ass crackers. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even return our calls. Black ass man. You, you been in that position a little too long. Acting like them suits now. That's not. I don't think it's going right for us guys. I don't know. I just feel it's disrespectful. And so let's open up the phone lines. What's the most disrespectful way you found out you were fired? <laughs> okay. Jesus. People out there, anybody out there want to ch- chime in? Huh? See, the cracker thing is funny when it's going at other people, but when it's, yeah. when it's crackers, you know? When it's crackers, yeah, crackers, when it's in, when crackers, in house. <laughs> and I ain't even been it long enough to know what crackers we talking about. Oh, so I don't even know. Anymore. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> What's the most disrespectful way you found out you were fired? 800. Nope, don't text me now. 585 1051. We, we have to take oh, another my sister. She said she hear us. Oh, okay. Dang. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, don't text me now. That's your sister. <laughs> <laughs> she in Atlanta. Okay. We have to take another sensitive training in oh, a little bit. That's what she's at. 800. <laughs> See, we on in Atlanta. Take it back. Psych. Can we just no, say psych? Psych. 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 No. Where is it? Well, you know what? Some crack ass sauces? I don't know. Just call us, all right? What's the most disrespectful way you found out you were fired? All right, let's discuss. 800 585 1051. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Daddy, call him my phone. Call him my phone. It's topic time. Call 800 585 1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, just hilarious. Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. If you just listening, Charlemagne gave donkey of the day to uh, the executives at 105.3 to beat me and Justin trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> what you mean? Y'all saw the same thing that I saw. Y'all I saw... did, but you more inside the we I don't know. <laughs> you called them crackers. We wasn't going that far. Oh, my God. I thought y'all was. See, that's the thing. Well, well, Louis V is the program director. He's black. So you called him a black cracker. But his name is yeah, Vladimir. He acting like that. He acting like one of them this weekend. We reaching out to him trying to figure out what's going on. Now, since Donkey today, he done text me. He done call you. Yes. Talk about this what we doing? The hell you mean this yeah, what we doing? Yeah, we talking about, no, don't be trying to be black now. Talking about this what we doing. <laughs> Boy, what? No. No. Don't exactly. even hit my phone. So we're asking since we got dropped from 105.3 to beat in Atlanta. Allegedly. Allegedly. People still hear us on it, they say. They say we still on right now. Right. Uh, salute okay. to the homie uh, Nina, Nina Brown. Salute to my sister down and salute to my sister Teresa and ATL. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we're asking, what's the most disrespectful way you find out you were fired? Well, what about you? You've been fired six times. I've been fired, f- well, I've been fired four times from radio. Mm-hmm. Um, Your sister fired you from Wendy's. That got to be the most Taco disrespectful. Bell. Don't Your talk about sister. Taco Bell. Sister was the manager, fired his dumb ass. I was there for like two weeks. Damn. Um, I don't think I've ever been fired in a disrespectful way. Like, they just okay. always call me in the office and tell me the same thing. We moving in another direction. Yeah. It's the most unprofessional way I've ever heard of uh, being dropped from a station with 105.3 The Beat did in Atlanta. Because I should not hear this from the internet before I hear from anybody That's true. here. No, nah, that's right. That's true. <clears throat> yeah. All right. What about you, Jeff? i never been fired a disrespectful way. I was... It was that one time for... Remember the story about McDonald's, right? They really felt bad for me. McDonald's? So they, yeah. Because I was stealing. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to take me to court. They just bought me in and was like... We know that you just had a baby and all that. We're not. We could really take you to court and get you put behind bars, but we're just gonna let you go. But you were stealing for a good reason. You were stealing apple pies, absolutely, and selling them. 
And, no, and I was not stealing yeah, apple pies. She was, pie. she was, she was, she was uh-huh. stealing apple pies from McDonald's and selling no, them. I was stealing, stealing apple, apple, apple pies. Pie. Pie. Yeah, but she had just had the baby. <laughs> oh. What you expect her to do? No, no, not, not what do you expect <laughs> me to do? How, How many apple pies did you sell? <laughs> no, I stole money out the register because I was the manager oh overnight and oh. we go on menu and and I was stealing the money. And How you got caught? Somebody snitched on me because I didn't break them off. Like, so why you like I should have. I did, but they thought they should have got more because mm. they, you know, they was What's the most you ever stole? It. I'm not even ready to do that. <laughs> 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 Man, my son came up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but that was that. Let's, let's, let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Kaya calling from Atlanta, 404. We can hear you. Okay, Kaya, you Y'all can hear, hear us. Yeah, so we on still. I don't know how long. So, so Kaya, yes. what's, you, you've been fired before in a disrespectful way? I've never been fired, but I have fired my employee. I've brought in a cake that says, sorry for your loss, and I walked right out the door. That's disrespectful. That's fine. Wow. You should have got reported to HR. <laughs> what, what kind of, where do, you, where, where, where do you work that you can do something like that? Yes. Well, I, I don't want to give away too much information, but I was a, a provider. Like, I was a dental hygienist, and I had to fire my doctor. Damn. And you said sorry for your loss? Damn. Sorry for your loss. I was the best one in there. Did you at least give him a severance? I, the cake. Y'all can have a cake. Damn. Wow. The cake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad y'all can still hear us in Atlanta. Yes. You cold-blooded. You got me one blood. Huh? Hello? Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up, man? What's your name? Where you calling from, too? First of all, my name is Darren. Everybody call me DJ. I'm from Chicago, but I live in Atlanta. I got my son next to me. His name Knowledge Yoel Jackson. Y'all remember that name? Okay. Knowledge, knowledge, God. But listen, let me tell y'all about the disrespect the way I got fired, y'all. Listen. Okay. I'm, t- I'm, I'm writing these letters. I'm telling people how thankful I am for this job, you know, and I'm, I'm going in. Man, that dude called me in the office on a Monday and say, hey, uh, DJ, it ain't working. I looked at him, I was like, what the hell? I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. Couldn't believe it. I'm like, I just sent all these letters telling God, thank God for this job. You disrespectful up in here this morning. So I you wanted to this place like before I did, y'all. So you only worked there for two days? Two days? Come on, bro. Well, you came on a little too strong. It's yeah, just like it a woman. Was. You dating a woman, then all of a sudden you want to propose to her after two dates? All of a sudden, why are you writing letters yeah. to the job? Talk about, I love y'all. I thank you so much for this job. You seem like a little bit of stuff, and that's probably the reason why. Like, why? Thank you, DJ. 800-585-1051. Let, let the record show, I ain't never heard this many people from Atlanta call into this goddamn radio station. Now, all of a sudden, y'all can hear us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, it, uh, Charlemagne gave Donkey the day to our station in Atlanta. Executives went on 5.3 to beat mm-hmm. because there was a story released on Friday that said we would be no longer working there. I saw yeah. it on Ball Alert. So and we, we got fired. from 105.3 to beat. That's right. And, and none of the executives responded to us all weekend. That's right. So we're asking, how's the uh, most disrespectful way you've been fired? Call us up right now. Let's discuss. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. If y'all talking about it, you know we talking about it. It's Topic Time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, Charlemagne gave donkey of the day to uh, executives at 105.3 The Beat. In Atlanta. In Atlanta. The story came out on Ball Alert on Friday saying that we were dropped uh, from 105.3 The Beat in Atlanta, and none of the executives had replied to us all weekend. Don't use that excuse that it was the weekend either, because that story dropped at like 10 o'clock on Friday. Friday. That's right. There was a whole right work day that the was episode. for the rest of the day that y'all yeah. did not reply to us, so cut it out. That's mm-hmm. right. We have Alicia on the line. Alicia, good morning. Hey, good morning, y'all. I'm you calling in from Atlanta. Can, can you hear us? Are we on in Atlanta? Yep, y'all on. I listen to y'all every morning. Appreciate it. So, so let me ask you, what's the most disrespectful way you got fired? Um, I got fired actually for going to a funeral. I told them that I was going to my cousin's funeral. My cousin had passed away. Uh, well, somebody snitched on me at the job, and management found out it was actually takeoff funeral. So they fired me. So you went to takeoff from the Migos funeral. Mm. You said it was your cousin's funeral. They found out you was lying, and they fired you. Yeah, he basically all our cousins. I'm going to that too. So. I technically did lie, but what? But that's the thing. How would they be able to prove? I mean, because that could really be your cousin. They that's just right. fired you because it was takeoff. They didn't believe me. Somebody, I think one of my friends told me that I was working with. Because she can wanted I, to go. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask you a personal question? Is takeoff yeah. really your cousin? He's not my cousin at all. Exactly. But you know, you had to get tickets, and they was like only giving away tickets for a few minutes, and so I caught tickets. I was like, I gotta go. Did you even know takeoff? No, I didn't know him. You know what's crazy? As soon as you said takeoff was your cousin, I looked up. 
and we got the Migos on the wall, and all I saw was takeoff saying, Cap. Cap. Hey, yo. <laughs> I promise you. I'm looking right at him right that now. That is so much. Cap. Uh, I'm from Gwinnett, though, so that kind of count. He's from Gwinnett. We from the same spot. That's true. That's true. You wanted to go pay your respects. I'm not mad at but that. But that friend is a hater because exactly. she ain't get to go. She told the boss that they weren't really cousins for real. That's Dang. right. Exactly. She got fun. That's actually kind of funny, though. It's crazy. <laughs> that's just, that's just, you know we black. That ain't her yeah, cousin. That is not she ain't even know takeoff. <laughs> we all cousins. She ain't even know take off wasn't on bad and bougie. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> oh, my God. Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Sandra. Hey, Sandra, Sandra. good morning. Good morning. First of all, where you calling from, Mama? I'm currently in Stockbridge, Georgia. Okay, so you can hear us on, on in Atlanta right now? Yes. Oh. We, me and my daughter were listening. Like, we can hear y'all. Y'all are on. All right. I don't know how long we're going to be on on this station, though. Let me ask you a question. So, what's the most disrespectful way you got fired? I've never been fired. Oh, I know that's right. Where, where you dance at? First of all. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I am, no. So, how you never been fired? You never been fired ever? I've never been fired ever. I've resigned, but I've never been fired. Well, congratulations to you, ma'am. What do you do for a living? No, that's right. Oh, I'm currently a manager at a call center. At where? At a call center? A call center. I used to work at a call center. I used to do telemarketing for this. Uh, I used to be the guy that had to call your house and try to sell you 20 CDs for a penny. Or 10 CDs for a penny. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah I'm gas. not that type of call center. <laughs> talking about, don't be I'm disrespecting what I used to do, people. yo. <laughs> Yeah, I saw, I saw gas. Don't be disrespecting what I used to do. You see how booty she sounded? <laughs> nah, yeah, it wasn't that kind of call center. Mm -mm. Yeah, but like, who's CD? No, because nobody wants those kind of calls. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Back in the day, this is before you were probably born. They used to sell these CDs like twenty for a penny, oh. and then they had to make you do a subscription. So you really ain't get it for a penny. You had to pay twenty nine ninety nine a month oh. or something like you know, that. You still got somebody on the line. Yeah, huh. she hung up. You hung up on her. No, she hung up. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. She hung up. Well, she got to get to the call center. But but <laughs> how, how would you do yours? Okay. <laughs> Call me, guys. I, I just want to hear what was your pitch. Go. I don't even remember now, but I used to have to call you and try to sell you 10 CDs for a penny, but it was, you know, you'd have to pay the penny, but then you have to pay, I think, the, the shipping and handling or something like that. That's how they would get you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I had to sell home heating fuel. Okay. Pelco Fuel. Hi, this is Sean from Pelco Fuel. How are you doing today? Is mm -hmm. that a baby in the background that I'm hearing? Do you want to save money for that baby's education? They're like, they teach you the whole... That is so clown -out. Shut up, white boy. Like, yeah. Oh, oh white boy. Oh. Shut up, white boy. You racist. So, <laughs> oh my Shut god, up, white boy. racist, <laughs> crazy, pip, pip squeak. Why Ross ain't call you a white boy? Huh? Why Ross ain't call you a white? Oh my god, Drake is half black, half white. That's why. All right, well, what's the moral of the story, guys? <laughs> we are definitely getting kicked off. You think air. so? Yeah. yeah, and a couple more airs we gonna be kicked off. Well, nobody. And by the way, say. nobody's still telling us nothing. Louis V called your phone. They texting us. People calling us saying they can hear us in Atlanta. Yeah, but ain't nobody calling. Yeah, ain't nobody still all telling the us. Blacks calling us. Wait till them whites email you. Well, can we can we? Get, I just want to know confirmation. Are we getting dropped? Or are we not getting dropped? I need sources to tell me. Okay. They going to try and be like, yes, we said that y'all are. <laughs> What's wrong with you? We just giving y'all a little grace period. Oh, well, Jesus, wrap it up. Say goodbye. Well, all right. Well, we got yeah. Jess with the mess coming up. What we talking? Well, about? The white people say we send it to the blossoms. That's the only thing you read. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Right. Read. Exactly. <laughs> We got Jess with the mess coming up. What are we talking about? The Allen Iverson statue that they put up and all the hoopla surrounded around it. Okay. We'll get into that next. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the mess. News is real. Weather is hilarious. Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess, worldwide mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a culture ship. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. So the Sixers unveiled Allen Iverson crossover statue at the practice facility on Friday. Um, he had gave a speech because he is the 10th 60, 76er to get a statue on the Legends Walk in front of the team's training facility in Camden. Mm -hmm. When y'all see that statue, y'all can feel good about the part that y'all did in helping me in my life. I, I truly appreciate it. This is such an honor, man, and it, it, it don't even seem real. Just seeing so many people in here that I love and just, just, just want to say all the right things and, um, and just want y'all to know how much I appreciate y'all. I love that. I love that. He was very, very happy when he got it. But what was strange was it was uh, widely criticized for being too small. So he became the number one trending topic on X or whatever. Um, 
Now, in the video showing other statues, you can see that they're all about the same size. And um, they had to be brought to my attention as well because I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't even know. And then also the other statues are like Charles Barkley, Wilt Chamberlain, mm-hmm. uh, Julius Irvin, mm-hmm. you know, and other greats legends. as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. legends or whatever. So, um, But it was also an argument that he does need his own statue, like a bigger one outside of... Outside the arena. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they were saying he never got a ring. He never got a ring. But, but who, do you need a ring to do that? I don't think so. What he's done for the seven six. But who else? Who else? Is there another statue out out there? Because Dr. J should have a statue out she just, there. She just named them. No, no, no. She named no, the statues like at the practice. Statue? You talking about the biggest statue yeah. at the Rocky actual? Rocky Balboa. Rocky Balboa. Ain't Rocky Balboa in front of? Rocky got a statue. Oh, okay. Yeah, Rocky. He don't even play no damn basketball. He's Rocky a fake ain't even a real fighter. I was He's a say, fake is character. He real? He real? Oh, no, they do. They got the, that, that statue they that was in the movie. The Rocky, yeah. yeah, that's real. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. It I was, mean, Al, listen, Allen Iverson is a culture shift. He's a cultural champion. He's the only all-time great. The only all-time great without a ring mm-hmm. who feels like he has quite a few rings. Mm-hmm. Nobody like Allen Iverson. Mm-hmm. No. Nobody. Obviously. Not at all. And if it, and if the statue wasn't... If, if he didn't care about the size, like, why do we care, honestly? Size, well, it, it all matched... Size matters. Well, it all matched the other wow. statues and all other legends yeah, at the all, practice yeah. facility. Now, at the major, at the actual arena, I, I think Allen... I wouldn't be mad at an Allen Iverson statue. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Okay. I don't well, know what the criteria is. I don't know. Yeah. And other news, Trace. No, that's you said that's in Philly, right? Mm-hmm. What about Meek? Meek needs a statue outside. All right. It's basketball we talking about. All right, all right, all right. Rocky is not a basketball. I don't think he's outside, the ba- he outside the basketball stadium? No, I thought Rocky was about to step somewhere. I don't know. Nobody, there's, no, there's a bunch of people here who say they're from Philly. But yeah, but nobody really knows, right? Yeah. Is he not really from, from there? No, I didn't. Where's the Rocky statue? Is it by the steps? It's by the steps? He said it's by the steps. like Lower Marion, Upper... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, on the outskirts. Upper Marion, <laughs> Lower Darby. Yeah. Listen, Trey Song settles twenty five million loss twenty five million dollar lawsuit mm-hmm. over alleged sexual assault in twenty sixteen. So there was a woman who identified as Jane Doe who sued Trey Songs, Atlantic Records, Trey's manager Kevin Lyles, and three hundred entertainment. And she claimed that Trey Songs had sodomized her at a party in March. In 2016, now y'all know I had pregnancy gra- brain. When I was going over this, I was like, "Like he cut her head off, but that was decapitation." But sodomy, sodomy, I know. Listen, mm-hmm. I know. Sodomization is something else. Um, yeah, I ain't even gonna say. It. Y'all look it up. Uh, the lawsuit also accused Trey Songs of sexual assault, gender violence, intentional and negligent infliction of emotional distress, and false imprisonment. Trey Songs and the woman settled for an undisclosed amount, and they did have a um a court date coming up September sixteenth, but that is no more because he settled. So mm, that's that. Nothing to say. All right, moving on. Mm. Justin B. <laughs> not mm. Justin Bieber. Did y'all see that before? I'm about, before I say it. Yes. Y'all seen it? I did. Listen, they was at Coachella, him and Jaden, and in the video, Jaden Smith surprised Justin Bieber from behind vigorously grinding ever so gently up against his buttocks. I seen that. As they swayed for a few seconds together like some smooth choreography. Yep. Then, what? Yes. Justin then kept the vigor going as he passionately canoodled Jaden's neck area before having a conversation with him. Both lovers seemed unbothered so why is everyone else. So. Uh, you, you, you Took out your phone to look at the video, then you? Because you always looking something up. He definitely did. You he seen, seen that video it. a couple times. I actually saw the video yesterday, and I ain't see all that you just described. What? You ain't see that? You ain't see him <laughs> canoe to his no. neck. You said he what? He did what? He did buttocks? Uh, they yeah. grinded on I, each other. They danced. He vigorously grinded ever so gently. He backed that thing up. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Justin ain't back it up. He like slid up. It. Well, he slid well, up. What to did him. you say? You say Jaden gonna be settling a lawsuit soon from Justin Bieber? In the no, future? no. What you saying? They That's the way you just described it. You sounded great. No. <laughs> That's, that Trey Song story ain't even sound like that. I said they swayed for a few seconds together like some smooth choreography. I ain't noticed all that. They did not. Nah, they went back they and forth. Did. They, they did. Back did. And forth like After that. a while, they did. you know, doing like a dance. Yeah. And JB didn't even know who he was, and so he turned around. So that could have been anybody. But JB is just like, oh, okay. Oh, that feels like Jaden. I, I kind of know who that is. Mm. So, and then he canoodled. He kissed him on the neck. cheek. Kissed him yeah. on the cheek. Kissed, okay, kissed him. But on the cheek. It was a smudge. I didn't see it all that was the from neck the video and, I saw, and but he, I, I didn't watch it that And he much, slid so. across to the ear. Okay. Started at the neck, went right up to the ear. What are we supposed to do with that information? 
Nothing. I'm just saying. Nobody's bothered. <laughs> no, they not bought. Everybody else bothered, but them. Let them two saying, friends man. be friends. That's right. Yeah. So if you want, if you want to do that, never. Listen. Okay. Now. Never. Okay. Never ever. You would never canoodle in these neck. <laughs> nope. Okay. <All> right. <laughs> or brush up against some episode. Gentlemen. What is canoodling? That sounds like we in a boat. Canoodle is going another down a word. It's another it's word. Like for kissing. Oh. Yeah, it was like a little snuggle kiss. Like, well, I what's the you. thing that Donnell Rollins be doing with Dave Chappelle in o in uh, Ohio? Comedy you be going down the water. That's canoeing, <laughs> man. Canoeing. Not canoeing. Don't play with me. She said comedy. Don't play with canoeing, me. man. This guy's crazy. Stop playing with people, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. That is just the night for the third hour, and I ended right on time. Yes, you did. All right, the people's choice mix comedy, is up next. But the show is funny. <laughs> sexy Red's birthday is today, so we're gonna start the mix off with some sexy hey, red. Happy birthday, girl! It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, wake up, wake up! You're locked into the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. I want to salute again to all the dance dads and and, and uh, dance moms out there. I mean, it's dance season. And it's, it's the other day I was I, I, I was there so long I, I've passed out for like a good hour I had like a good hour and a half nap Just waiting for my daughters to perform So I just want to salute to all the dance dads and dance moms I be seeing y'all out there We be struggling But we be good <laughs> money And Jess you want to say uh, happy birthday to your son? It was yesterday Damn okay <laughs> Yo okay. Yo it was his, we, it was his birthday okay. all weekend Happy right. birthday baby I love you He's now 12 and almost taller than me I don't know what I'm going to do You know the crazy thing I was thinking about? Mm -hmm. Now I'm about to start right back over That's right Yo. Changing diapers. 12 years. Breastfeeding. All of that. Yep. Oh my gosh. All that work I had to get for his ass. And now I'm about to start back over. Jesus. But. It's a blessing. That's what, yeah, it is a blessing. And it was all worth it to see him grow up like that. Like, <laughs> you know what's also crazy? Mm -hmm. I posted Ash for his birthday. And all my fans is like, damn, he's 12. I remember when he was four and five yep. and six. And I'm like, you never really think about. Time. Yeah, you never think about time it. Like I was putting time. him online when he was a baby, all the way up to now. I mean, he he don't like to be on camera no more, but like they seen him grow up. I love that. My fans seen my son grow yep. up, so that's why I was like, oh, that's so much love. Ash did not care. He said, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, when we come back, we got the positive note. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Charlamagne, you got a positive note? Yes, I do. And I want to tell people, man, uh, make sure you go get your tickets for the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival. Happening Saturday, April 27th in Atlanta, man. Um, Wallow and Gilly on that stage. Jess Hilarious with Carefully Reckless. Mandy and Wheezy with Horrible Decisions. We got uh, podcast panel stages. Uh, Shauna Ayers will be on some of those. John Hope Bryant, Damon John, Carrie Champion. We got the food trucks. We got the Pitch Your Podcast activation. So just like last year, man, we had a lot of fun. So go get your tickets. Uh, we definitely on pace to sell out. So you go get your tickets while you still can. VIP is already sold out because you waited too long to get them. So don't be hitting my phone. Talking about you want VIP. You should have got the tickets when they were available. Okay? Okay. But go to eventbrite.com or blackeffect.com slash podcast festival, and we'll see you in Atlanta on April 27th. Uh, I don't know if 105.3 The Beat will be there or not. Okay? I have no idea. I don't know either. <laughs> right. Uh, but we'll see. But the positive note is simply this. Did you know some people are addicted to conflict and suffering? They honestly feel there is some sort of pride gained from it. Beware of people like this. Stay away from them. They will create problems where they don't exist just to bask in the energy of the conflict. Misery is a state of mind, and it loves company. Have a blessed day. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?